You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 14th of March and I'm Will from Milford. The Russian invasion of Ukraine continued to be a focus for global financial markets last week. Commodities again saw large moves with crude oil soaring to over 130 US dollars a barrel on the back of the US and UK moving to ban Russian oil and gas imports before settling back to end the week at $113 a barrel. Safe Haven Gold also broke higher, hitting 2050 US dollars an ounce during the week to trade an 18 month high. Perhaps the most remarkable move, however, was in nickel, where on Tuesday, the price doubled in a matter of hours, causing chaos as brokers and traders struggled to pay margin calls driven by the extraordinary move. The London Metals Exchange eventually decided to cancel all of Tuesday's trades, and nickel didn't trade again for the rest of the week as brokers and traders attempted to shore up positions and margin requirements. Equity market volatility continued to persist at high levels, causing large swings throughout the week. One factor driving this was the extreme degrossing of hedge funds. This sees hedge funds sell their long positions and cover or buy stocks that they are short to reduce exposure. Because of the aggressive nature of hedge funds, this can cause sharp moves in markets. Goldman Sachs estimates that in dollar terms, the degrossing activity in US single stocks over the past week was the largest over the past year and the fifth largest over the past five years. US inflation hit a new 40-year high in February, with headline CPI of 7.9% year-on-year versus 7.5% in the previous month. Rent was a standout, rising 60 basis points month-on-month and continuing to accelerate, while food and energy were both also extremely strong, up 7.9% and 26% respectively year-on-year. It's also worth noting that much of the recent spike in energy prices due to the Ukraine crisis would not be reflected in this data release, so it is likely we could see another record print in the next month's data. The European Central Bank surprised markets by accelerating plans to wind down stimulus, signalling that it is more concerned about inflation than the impact of the Ukrainian conflict on growth. Officials ramped up their 2022 inflation forecast to 5.1% from 3.2% previously. The bank will slow bond buying to 30 billion euros in May, 20 billion in June, and may halt the programme altogether in the third quarter. It was, however, cagey about any subsequent rate hikes, but money markets are now betting on a 25 basis point increase in October instead of December. RBA Governor Lowe spoke this week on recent economic developments focusing on the current inflation and employment outlook for Australia. Lowe noted that while very low unemployment has surprised the central bank, falling to the lowest levels in a decade, they expect that this will continue lower still. The bank's central forecast is now for unemployment to fall below 4% and stay there into 2023. On inflation, Lowe noted that while Australia's headline inflation rate of 3.5% sits right at the top of the 10-year range, it is still far lower than offshore developed markets. He also noted that the large price jump seen in energy, goods and wages in markets such as the US and the UK have not been seen domestically. However, most interest was on his closing comments, noting that it is plausible that the cash rate will be increased later this year. This is a change from his previous rhetoric that the RBA would not hike rates until 2023 and signals a softening in his dovish stance. Turning to stock news, Aristocrat Leisure provided an update at an investor roundtable held last week, addressing the concerns around its exposure to Ukraine and Russia. Aristocrat have 1,000 employees in Ukraine and have been able to relocate two-thirds of these to safer parts of Ukraine or Poland. Beyond this, they highlighted they expected minimal impact to earnings and their digital development pipeline. The latter was a big concern of the markets, and we therefore saw a relief rally of 4% on the day. AGL Energy received a revised bid of $8.25 a share last week from the consortium led by Alassian co-founder Mike Cannon-Brooks. While an increase from the initial bid of $7.50 to take the company private, AGL rejected the improved offer, stating that the proposal continues to ignore the value that AGL shareholders have through their proposed merger. It appears that this bid was fairly opportunistic, being drafted before the large recent moves in energy prices. Cannon Brooks tweeted to say that he would now walk away from the proposed takeout. Nickel Mines was caught up in the commodity route during the week when it emerged that their largest shareholder may have to potentially sell down their 20% stake, which saw the stock end down 25% for the week. 
The stake is owned by Chinese nickel giant Shinghan, which was reported to have suffered an $8 billion trading loss on short nickel positions causing large margin calls from the London Metals Exchange. This caused speculation amongst nickel mine investors that Shinghan may need to sell their stake to fund these calls. Nickel Mines released a statement saying that Shinghan has given them assurances they are not planning to sell, however this did little to allay market fears. In the week ahead, markets will focus on the Federal Open Markets Committee rate decision early Thursday morning. It is expected that the committee will increase interest rates, however there is debate as to whether this will be 25 or 50 basis points. Post a strong CPI print last week, it may give some support for 50 basis points. However, most expect that the Fed may be patient considering the uncertainty created from the Ukraine conflict. There will also be focus on the forward rate track for further hikes and any comments Chair Powell may make about impacts from the Ukraine crisis. The market currently has 1.6% of hikes priced for 2022, which would see the Fed fund rate at 1.85% by year end. The February Australian employment data will be released on Thursday. This will be a good measure to see how the labour market is tracking after the Omicron affected January data. Analysts expect the unemployment rate to fall to 4.1% from 4.2%. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.